Yo, yo, it's ODB from OLP. This is issue 172 of Mini Trucking Magazine, April 2006. This is an awesome issue. A lot to talk about with it. You have Farva's Blazerado that was, of course, reskinned uh, by Silver Star. It's the 16th severed ties truck to be featured on the cover of the magazine. Mike Alexander's 10th credited cover. We got E Air Valves, also known as Mac Daddy. Uh, as the insert photo there. This is the third of seven total covers, uh, or cover trucks rather, with uh, BAD wheels, Build Accessory Direct. Uh, the centerfold is in the middle, so we'll talk about it. The model is not on the cover, but she was in the centerfold and then one minor image in the feature itself. Something to point out, shout out to Nick Crouch. Uh, Nick does the artwork that you're going to see in the actual um, centerfold for the most part. So he gets credit for that. Uh, now, I want to point something out to you. For those that don't know, there was an alternate rendering. A lot of people kind of had forgotten about this. I think I posted it years ago under maybe the hashtag Blazerado. But at one point, it was going to be called Wildfire, I believe is... Um, I mean, according to this rendering, but you can see there to me, I really dig these colors too. Uh, I certainly think it came out even better than this, but certainly that thought process or potential concept, if you will, I thought was pretty cool. So I wanted to share that. So with, the, with that being said, we're going to jump in here and go through this issue again, April, 2006 issue 172. Uh, again, lots to talk about very good issue. Mike Alexander shoots it, of course, and again, severed on the cover. And uh, there's there's no way you could spin to me that, you know, there was a bias because this truck was insane, especially for its time. Of course, it has a, a story legacy even after this. Many of you know what happens to it. But we can see here Farva, uh, as he's, that's his nickname, uh, his Blazerado there. It mentions Silver Star, Mike Alexander, and then artwork Nick Crouch of Surface Art. Uh, Nick's a good dude, saw him at SEMA last year real quick, slapped hands, and uh, he's been doing the dang thing for a long time, and he's obviously, over the course of time, you could tell from this era, had built up a good relationship with Mike Alexander. Uh, here is dragging through Mike Alexander's column. Now, years ago, I for work, I went to Tennessee, and I had dinner, I mean, this is a long time ago. And uh, went out to dinner with Farva and some of the Sever Tennessee guys. I mean, I don't even remember what year it was. I think it was, it was shortly after all this. And Farva talked about uh, taking a Sawzall and cutting the uh, Blazerado core support. And I think, if I remember correctly from that story, which again, I had forgotten about this until I got to this issue. Originally, there was going to be maybe a concept of some sort where the the hood was off or it kind of showed almost like what we saw with Brant's from rendering to reality. It was going to be some sort of kind of like superimposed like overlay um, to show maybe inside the engine bay or something to that effect. I think he told me he ended up, although they went to this length and they did this, um, I think he ended up cutting or maybe sending it out to get chromed. So uh, some vague memories there that were totally stored away somewhere in my mind, but uh, this is, Friendship, commitment, and hard work equal mini trucker uh, teamwork. So there you go. Some of that stuff is from the depths of my brain. Uh, here you have Jamie Swift from the podcast of the Pacific Northwest and uh, mini trucker Colt, if you will. Uh, he's been around a long time. He's got a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool bikes. Uh, I don't feel like I get a chance to you know catch up with him very uh, much or not enough, rather. Uh, this is a truck I do not mind the shaved corners on. Uh, I think I've kind of made my uh, feelings known how I thought about them on the S10. To me, they look awkward, but certainly not on uh, many of these other trucks. Here's Steven Sofer, 88 Chevy S10. So you can see, again, construction zone kind of more towards the the front. Uh, these beds um, were kind of cool. Uh, I guess depending on your liking, uh, I always remember the orange S10 that had that similar bed. But uh, you can see there are a lot of work in that one especially on the uh, the inside. And again, Jamie's looking looking pretty cool with that rear setup. If you like what we're doing here, please leave a comment. Even if it's just an emoji, thumbs up, it helps us out. Uh, here's Rolling Deductible. This is by Chad Lucas. He also shot the feature. And uh, super cool. You know, just 
you know, it might be an S10, but I, I love these trucks and you can kind of see there just a, a cool layout. You've got that bed shot and you have the S10, you know, front three quarter, kind of a flat faced wheel on it, something a little bit different and uh, looking good. This was Matt Reynolds. And I just love even just seeing these, you know, these trucks that are, you know, regular cab, you know, earlier. This one's a 99, but it almost gives me the vibe of an earlier year for some reason. I think maybe because I just owned one just with the roll pan and just, you know, a little bit simpler times. You know, uh, definitely an awesome truck, but nothing, you know, so insane or so crazy that you wouldn't want to go drive it. Uh, many people build insane trucks and still drive them. So, you know, I, it just, I don't know. To me, it seems like a little bit of simplicity goes a very long way. Here's Midnight Fantasies Lakefront Tour 05. I can never remember the year that I went. Uh, we went uh, one year, and, uh, man, we had a great time at the show. I, I want to say the year we went, it maybe rained. Um, Matt, I think, if I remember correctly, you guys, maybe you went as well. Um, I remember, I think Chris had left his truck on the trailer or so, there was something maybe you guys went another year and his key was misplaced or it was something but um i don't i don't know where sometimes these memories are stashed away and they come back when i start looking at these magazines uh here's bitchin new products from sema 05 now again the front insert shot with the e air valves that is also a key thing because if you go to sema there's that whole area where there's new products and this is primarily what they want to do. They want the media to pick up on those and kind of get a little bit of publishing, if you will, a little pub, um, uh, you know, for these new products. Uh, here we can see the Mac Daddy E Air Valves. That was Jim Everett. Uh, Kool Aid was involved. Uh, there was also another guy. I can't remember his name, but we used to hang out with a little bit. I think he was from the Carolinas. But uh, some of the newer products there. Uh, fun fact: I still had these valves on my truck until three years ago um all the diaphragms were bad and the truck would leak up and um jimmy and and, and tim they went through and, and did a bunch of kind of a punch list on my s10 here is the uh the money shot right so this is the i'll call it the centerfold uh, right smack down in the middle it's obviously easy to remove you can see nick crouch's blazer auto kind of in that graffiti font uh, you got mini truck in there kind of the cool logo with a dice now unless i missed it i do not think they mention her name the model i do and as soon as i say that i'll probably find it but uh you can briefly see here nick crouch you know obviously they gave him credit earlier but just a super cool truck you know this is a truck that's very far ahead of its time i mean you know when i would hear about trucks getting reskinned and stuff it conversations with chad lucas and talking about some of the stuff bob grant was doing and stuff and you know there's definitely been trucks that have been reskinned but to have a truck like this be in an earlier year uh blazer and again here's the other rendering of it and you know for it to be not only just the front end grafted on but essentially you know the you know everything and then of course the rear doors are shaved it's technically if, you, if you've never noticed that that um you technically didn't even uh, you couldn't even open those you know it was all stereo back there but uh certainly one of the most insane trucks and again there's a lot more to come on that truck as time goes on sigma 2005 i always love looking back at um some of the coverage here this thing was insane this colorado was one of the first handful a few that were done and of course uh, i think it ends up on the cover if i remember correctly and you can kind of see what they did is when they went topless with it they cut this at an angle and it just was totally different Here's Kurtz. This is now owned by Severed Washington, I think it was. And um, I posted it recently. And, of course, you know, people go, hey, I can't believe they didn't mention, you know, the new owner. And, I, you know, oftentimes I can only uh, post what, what I have in front of me, you know, and what I remember. Uh, people know that I, I do have a pretty good memory, but I, I don't know every owner that has since had said truck and every Instagram name. Although some people think I do. Uh, here's Blazerado. It was at SEMA 05, obviously. And we've got the credit. Uh, we've got the, the receipts for that. Here you can see, again, uh, nothing new to minis and BMX bikes. There's some there, kind of uh, mid-school. And 
this was insane. So uh, I've talked a little bit about Brad Spears truck. So it was on the cover. We went through that. I showed you some kind of, you know, some photos last time I saw it. But a lot of people don't realize that they went back and did a lot more to this. You can see the engine is no longer a 4.3. There was always a rumor that he had a, an issue or a challenge with the 4.3. I know I've experienced some hiccups myself, but that thing is insane. But look what they ended up doing. You can see here with the third door open, like right-hand drive, crazy dash, all speakers. I mean, kind of that mid 2000 feel at that point you know with all of that and uh, someone did confirm i forget if it was kyle or someone chimed in on facebook and said uh, r.i.p to the truck and i was like well, or they said r.i.p and i was like to brad or the truck and they said it's somewhere in north florida at a stereo shop and it's just a cab and a bed just in the corner so that's unfortunate uh here we see this toyota that we will see in this issue we got ron perkins a regular cab and some of the Lambo doors or uh, at the Tesla, if you ever go to the Tesla store, you'll hear them say Falcon doors is what they call the rear of their whatever model they have that has the Lambo-esque doors. So here's really the feature. So I know I kind of moved a little ahead quickly on it, but that was the centerfold. But basically, again, you know, the art department doing a fantastic job. To me, great front three quarter shot uh, in the studio. You've got the Blazerado. Uh, for anybody, I, I love the street kind of wear and I love, you know, hip hop and all that. But uh, to me, it's always kind of tough to, to sometimes uh, make out, you know, graffiti. I can't read graffiti as good as some people, but obviously we knew the truck was called Blazerada. So I thought that was super cool. Officer Farva's three week miracle. Farva, of course, gets the name from the uh, the famous movie. I think is, is how, if I remember correctly, on him, you know, getting that nickname from Farva on the TV show, movie. And, uh, which my buddy is, I think it was a movie, then I, they spun it off to a TV show. If I remember, Super Troopers, I, I think it is. It's coming back now. Uh, here you can see just an insane build, uh, you know, by t even by today's standards, so much work went into this thing. And, um... You know, Vier, Memphis Audio, I know, like, they were big partners. It's a 95. Dash was super cool, like, a lot different. You know, when you look at, you know, these low-car-looking pedals, you've got that center console, which was so cool. The dash, kind of with the hidden gauges there. And then just an over-the-top build. And it's crazy that this thing, again, went through even more stuff that I don't want to really talk about right now, but most of you know what ended up happening to it. Officer Farva, so that was a cool photo with the glasses, and you see all the stereo there. Again, the rear doors didn't open, so you know with the windows down, you'd be able to see, and you can tell here they have those kind of crazy windows where most of it rolls down, but the, based upon where the wheel well's at, it would have had that little glass piece, but you could have still peeked in there and saw all of that. Super cool truck. And um, it's still in existence, my understanding, but the people won't sell it, and it's just sitting, which is kind of a sad thing, but it is what it is. Badass S Series, this Mazda is all about sweating the details. And with this one, I do not think they put the little box, which sometimes, I don't want to say it was a typo, but sometimes they would leave that out. The little box thing that they ended up adding was super cool because you could see it right away. But if we... Look down here, it's Jason, R-E-I-S-S-E-R. -S -S -E uh, this is his Mazda, and there's a couple Mazdas out with this similar color, but I tell you, like, this truck, especially for its era, you know, almost 20 years ago, super clean, and uh, I would take this truck all day. Dash looks great. Everything looks awesome about this truck, and it's so cool, as I always say, to look back. A little bit at uh how the times have changed but you look at this thing and what always stood out to me is like, like this guy just didn't do the top like he went all full bore and it's you know there's certain trucks i think sometimes you know maybe we forget a little bit because it's just like there's so many but that's why the magazine was so important to me because you could look back and go wow like people were raising the stakes um even you know before many people even realized it you know and my dad used to always say the greatest songs have already been written 
you know, or produced, if you will, you know, think about rock and roll and all the awesome musicians. That's another reason why I kind of always say some of the greatest trucks have already been built. You know, it's, it's no disrespect to us now, you know, can a truck be built to this caliber or past it? Absolutely. But at the same time, some of the greatest trucks, they have already been built. Uh, the 18th annual Nopi Nationals. And you can see here uh, a show that many of us loved. Some of us went to it more than others. Here's Bobby's truck. We got to see that at Eastbound Get Down this year, cover truck. But, um, you know, the truck kind of, or this uh, show kind of faded, faded from existence. And I believe they're trying to kind of build it back. Uh, it was always good in the heyday because it had a good mix of Sport Compact, which was their primary bread and butter, but a lots of mini trucks as well. The Southeastern Mini Truck and Nationals, I cannot rattle off the top of my head the different variations of that show. We all know it as kind of like Mini Nats, but there are, you know, you can slice and dice it and it gets a little confusing. And I'm on the Mini Truck Hall of Fame and I think we had to vote on the show last year and it was half of us thought it was Mini Nats and then other people were like, no, it's not. And it, it gets a little confusing, but... Um, Matt, I know you watch a lot of these videos. Here's another show where Mike, we called him Mike Jones because that song was popular then. But of course, Mike Lewis, as Matt knows from Alabama, when he had the van. So there it pops up again. We just recently saw it. But that's kind of the crazy thing. If you look back at, you know, some of the show names, like I said, over the course of time, Nationals was a big word. Um, you think Lone Star, the word throwdown, that's also a word that has been used a lot. But the show, the Southeastern Mini Truck and Nationals is is one of those that, again, there's a couple variations of it. You know, the original Mini Nats, and it kind of busted out to the two um, different, uh, you know, husband and wife and all that stuff. So it gets confusing. Uh, Matt, I remember when you laid this one out as well. That's always been a super cool truck. I believe this thing is still around. Um, I think Jody, did Jody Hall do some work or maybe Matt came in and then put it on hydros or it was on hydros and went to air or something like that. But I remember Matt working on that and seeing that here in Tampa. Uh, this is all downhill, Steve Hill 92 Toyota pickup. So you can see here that little grid that I was talking about that makes it super easy to see. This thing was super cool. Uh, I was talking to Joey Whitby recently from Arizona and he was going to be looking to get up potential uh, Toyota that reminded me of this because of the color but I remember this being in a Rhino liner maybe ad uh it was definitely a bed liner ad and and the the tailgate was down I think I think because maybe you can't put the tailgate down yeah you can I think I can see it there but I remember I think the tailgate was down the guy sitting there and you can kind of see it's got nitrogen and then you got the hump here and then it had the other hump which I always thought was cool kind of going from the bottom up to the back of the bed uh, just kind of a cool, something a little bit different. But this truck, uh, always super nice. And then you can see here, pretty cool art department all downhill with the, the sparks. Kind of giving it the, the appearance that it's dragging, but it's not. Uh, but although that photo, I think, is from a drag session. You get what I'm saying. Here you go. There it is. Another thing I liked was um, always seeing, you know, with these clean bed liners, the Reiner liner type deals. And then seeing like the gas cap inset or like the coolers that people would bake into these with the little drain plugs was always cool. Uh, this is also something else I love that you've got the rear seats in there, but you've got the blow through, which I think ties into the fact that that, that metal piece, like I was saying, um, how it goes up, you know, that probably allows for the box to be built into there, which I thought again was pretty trick. Sliding rag top, some push button controls for the air suspension super clean that oatmeal kind of color that reminds me of rob scepter's isuzu awesome truck so here's tampa 2005 and of course you've got the mazda remember seeing that thing there super cool mike hills ford explorer that goes on to get rebuilt and then of course graces street trucks and gets street trucks truck of the year this was a local guy. I remember hanging out with him a little bit or someone I think that owned the truck before Thomas got it. Um, I think something like that. And then there's another one Matt Torgerson built. I think that was what, Bobby's? And uh, I got a, some footage of that, I think, or some old photos I stumbled across the other day uh, when it was at Matt's shop, the shop. 
Uh, here's something kind of crazy as I start to wind this down here. This was always insane to me. You've got the third door and they welded that together. And that was like one big suicide door. For those that don't remember that, pretty crazy. There's the truck. I kind of messed up. One of the Sever brothers had chimed in. And he goes, no, wait, you know, such and such truck. The one you parked next to at Camp and Drive 2012. That was my truck, the Assassin. And I'm like, yeah, how did I, how did that go over my head? Uh, this looks like this looks like Ben's truck. Um, became friends with him, and of course, uh, that's what it looks like. The truck that's um, onto the second generation uh, may or may not be a hundred percent. I don't think it said who it was from. You've got riding around, which I kind of agreed to slow down a little bit here. I know I tend to go over some of this. There's that photo again, a little bit different. Um, you know, it, it's still the same of what it's looked like, but that, that thing's been in there a ton. I don't know if anybody's ever noticed that, but of course I'm not gonna stop talking about it. Uh, MT Graffiti. And I think that's Chad Lucas there, looks like maybe. And then rest in peace, Ernie Macias. Again, I was thinking about him the other day. I took out some scooters that I had purchased from him. I had purchased three of the 80s, 90s kind of little scooters and um, was changing a tube on one of the tires and I was thinking of him because he sold them to me. And uh, the big homie's no longer with us, man. Rest in peace, Ernie. Uh, again, this is the Easter egg. I need to go back and I'll have to show you at the end of one of the other videos how the window was busted out. I think it was busted out more on the sport truck back covers and that was because, again, if you didn't see that other video Ron talked about, to me that uh, the keys got locked in the truck and they had to bust it out. And until they realized it, then they went and did some Photoshop and, and made it look a little bit better. So a little Easter egg there for you. But uh, if you did make it to the end, I certainly appreciate it. I really do. Um, this is issue 172, April, 2006. Shout out to Alan Jackson, AKA uh, Farva, Blazerado, an amazing truck. And uh, I think really should be uh, one day in the Mini Truck Hall of Fame. This thing is insane. Really pushed the limits on a lot of ways. Stay on the rise, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe. We got you. Peace.